Uh, now, one of the things we've been doing at the Institute and sort of building on a social scientific framework for studying congregations context and the environment. And uh, we provide some theological variation, of course, in the different traditions we study, but we also look at different regions of the country. Uh, and perhaps if you pay attention to news, you'll know that uh, many of the things that happen within Quebec uh, when it comes to uh, religious culture and values and so forth are quite distinctive. And what does it mean to in this setting. And so uh, our next presenter, Dr. Uh, Frederick Dijon, and uh, is professor of religious studies at the University of Quebec in Montreal. And so Frederick, I'll invite you up. Um, yes. uh, good morning, everyone. Very happy to be here with you today. So I will talk about the situation in Quebec, which is quite specific. So in Quebec, religious statistics, especially those regarding Christianity, reveal a state of a deep crisis. And rather than new congregations being formed, we more often see closures, repurposing, or even demolition of places of worship. However, in this climate that is not very favorable to religious entrepreneurship, evangelical Protestant churches, which portray themselves as urban and fall into the category of non denominational Christianity, have been launched by young religious entrepreneurs. And in this presentation, I would like to focus on two of them, La Chapelle and Axe 21, which are the, the name of the two churches. And I wanted to conserve the name because the names are important. And we, with my colleague André Gagné at Concordia University, we uh, made a survey from 2020 to 2022. Obviously, these two churches do not solely represent all facets of Quebec evangelical Protestantism. However, I propose to approach them as Christianity laboratories. And in the next few minutes, I would like to show that the two churches deploy multiple strategies stemming from an accessibility theory whose ultimate goal is to make the church a relevant institution that is to that is to say, it is meaningful not only for its members, but also for the rest of society. So La Chapelle and Axe 21 in the evangelical landscape of Quebec. Quebec is recognized more for its Catholic tradition than for Protestant tradition. Nevertheless, evangelicals in Quebec experienced the phase of awakening during the 1960s and the 1980s. Today, they benefit from three concurrent phenomena. Significant growth in immigrant churches, especially Asian churches, African churches, and South American churches. And these churches are mainly located in Montreal. Second, a missionary effort originating in English-speaking Canada or the USA. And finally, a francophone religion entrepreneurship primarily encoded in the Baptist tradition, which is developing a renewed and innovative religious option, mainly inspired by the churches in the USA. Although it is quite modest, this positive dynamic is quite remarkable when compared to the profound crisis the Catholic Church and mainstream Protestant denominations are currently experiencing. The most recent data released by statistics by Statistics Canada in 2021 show that in Quebec, evangelical groups were the only segment of Christian denominations to maintain their position, some of them even having a slight increase. So La Chapelle and Axe 21 are two churches that were launched, that were launched fairly recently, respect, uh, respectively 2000, 2010 for Axe 21 and 2013 for La Chapelle. They are based on Baptist, Baptist theology and led by pastors in their forties. And mem members of pastoral teams in each church range from 25 to 40 years old. Both churches are distinctive in that they are multi-site churches. For instance, uh, Axe Church is located in two different cities in Quebec, uh, one church in Sherbrooke and one in Magog. The pastors who launch the two churches perfectly fall into the category of what we call 
religion entrepreneur. And I was uh, deeply inspired by the, the book by Richard and Pitt, Church Planters Inside the World of Religion Entrepreneurship. In this book, Pitt points out that entrepreneurship is a process of recognizing an opportunity to create new goods or services, or ways to deliver them, and then acting on this recognition. This definition leads to distinguish three elements. First, identifying a business opportunity, designing and developing goods and services, and finally, implementing distribution strategies that best represent the offer and demands in given context. So why the leaders of the two churches recognize there is a tension between norms and values that predominate in Quebec society, and though their churches hold, the fact remains that this tension between the values of society and the values of the church, um, this tension must be part of a conversation in such a way that the church does not, does not simply lose the attention of its contemporaries. La Chapelle and Axe 21 focus their actions on the goal of being accessible to outsiders. The challenge for leaders is therefore to speak the language of Quebec culture in order to disseminate their message in the channels that shape that culture. In the next section, I, I would like to show how the two churches manage to make church culture compatible with the culture in which individuals find themselves through mobilizing what I call a practical accessibility theory. This is my second part, avoiding selective baffles and accessibility theory. Like other congregations falling into the category, category of non-denominational Christianity by both discourse and practices, La Chapelle and Axe 21 develop ideas about accessibility that emerge on many levels, theological, ritual, cultural, and even special. This accessibility focuses on creating a continuum between the daily life of individuals and what they can experience within the church so that they, these are not two separate worlds. If some churches make tension with and perhaps even separation from the cultural environment, a powerful driver of their action, La Chapelle and Acts 21, Acts 21 concretely oppose this attitude since they implement mechanisms that leave no incompatibilities between what is experienced within and outside the church. And to, to denote this uh, process, I have, borrowed, uh, I have borrowed French semiologist Roland Barthes' expression of selective baffle, uh, in French, uh, chicane selective, uh, an expression he uses in his very famous essay, the pleasure of the text. Describing literature, Roland Barthes writes that the text, uh, the text, we can see the quote, the text is a fetish and this fetish desires me. The text chooses me by a world disposition of in invisible screens, selective buffers. Uh, vocab vocabulary, references, readability, etc. Unlike a wall that does not different, differentiate and simply blocks anyone from entering, the baffle allows for, for distinguishing between people who know the code for understanding the text and the others. In the minutes that remains, I would like to present two strategies designed to, evolve, to avoid the selective buffers in the two churches, which is, uh, 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 what I call religious metalanguage and a safe religious space. So first, what I call the religious metalanguage. So I would like to start with the um, um, uh, with a quote, with a quotation. Uh, we are in November 2021 at the Chebuk Acts 21 Church, uh, which at this moment gathered in Bishop's University Concert Hall. Uh, uh, an English-speaking university close to the city of Sherbrooke. And this Sunday morning, 10 people uh, were baptized. At the beginning of the meeting, the youth pastor comes to the center of the stage and begins to speak this way. 
So this is a quotation. It's a very long quotation, but I think it's very important. So I, uh, here is what the youth pastor said to the, to the public. For you, this morning might be your first time at Acts 21, and I would like to especially welcome you. You consider yourself a, a, a skeptic. Maybe you are curious about God. So I would like to explain a bit to, exp, explain a bit to you about what this church is like. This is a church that meets at Bishop, but seriously, we could meet anywhere because the most important message for us is the message of the Bible. We believe in Jesus Christ. We believe in the truth that the Bible expresses to us. But we believe that the church must still be relevant for us today. That's why you are going to see that our pastor wears regular clothes. As for me, sometimes I wish he had a robe just because it would be fun. If you are wondering who I am, besides the guy who is in front this morning, my name is Corentin, and I am the youth leader here at Acts 21. What is a youth leader besides making announcements now and then? Well, I take care of teams. Before handing this over to Pastor Jasmin, I will explain what we are currently doing at Acts. While the words of the pastor are motivated by the fact that on baptism days, People who are not Christian or are unfamiliar with the embryological sphere are likely to be present. This type of discourse, this type of public discourse, is quite common at La Chapelle and Acts 21. Borrowing a term that originated in linguistics, I am speaking of religious meta language to refer to the fact that during a religious activity, someone explains the religious activity in a way that helps members of congregation and visitors who are not necessarily familiar with it, understand, uh, with it to understand its meaning. So it's not only the religious activity, but it's a fact that someone is commenting the activity when it's performing. Uh, the excerpt quoted above illustrate perfectly that this religious meta-language covers several dimensions. First, the identity of the church and its theological setting. Second, the position held by leaders. And fi finally, the meaning of the current activity. And uh, I, I would like to finish with the second um, element I would like to investigate, uh, what I call a safe religious space. Uh, during an interview, a pastor, uh, uh, a pastor at X21 explained that I told myself that when we started X21, I wanted the only obstacle to be the cross and the gospel message. Because my friends have not refused the gospel message, they have refused an institution, a way of doing this. They have rejected the wrapping paper, not the gift. They found the wrapping paper so ugly, if you will, that they did not even wait around to see the gift inside. A pastor at La Chapelle, Quebec, followed the same line of thought during a Sunday morning discussion uh, before the meeting started. And I quote, we have created an experience team that specifically ensures that the experience here is the best possible. In this way, if people are not touched, it's not because of something we could have taken action on. The two churches expand considerable efforts to create a space within which people feel comfortable. This is what I call a religious safe space. And you probably know the expression, a safe space. By this expression, I identify a mechanism, both spatial and temporal, that promotes inclusion of each participant, regardless of religious background or spiritual progress. It primarily involves making everyone comfortable. And for instance, as one Acts 21 pastor mentioned, uh, we want our recurrent process to represent very good customer service, but no more. We don't want it to be intrusive. 
We don't want people coming through the door of the church to be asked too many questions. Are you new here? Have you already given your life to the Lord? Have you been born again? Or things like that. As the expression religious safe space suggests, places where churches meet are not randomly chosen. Why we must remember they must con uh, churches must contend with strong constraints and not, do not always have much latitude regarding the places where they meet, leaders of urban churches spend a very long time reflecting about places where members meet. One of the Acts 21 founders testified to this. This is the last quotation. What obstacle prevents people from hearing Bible message? We came to the conclusion that the place we meet is intimidating. It's a church, which is kind of off-putting for most people. It's not always very welcoming. This led to our decision to rent the Granada Theater, which is the oldest theater in Sherbrooke and that everyone knows about. Everyone comes here for one reason or other. So it's a neutral space where everyone has gone and knows where the entrance and exit are. They don't have to, they don't have to, work, to worry about being trapped here. You enter easily and leave whenever you want. So in conclusion, while La Chapelle and Acts 21 do not convey all the complexity of the Quebec evangelical landscape, they do represent two excellent laboratories of Christianity in the context of a post-Christian society. Even though Quebec, where until recently Catholicism played a social and cultural role, seems to have, been, to have mainly turned away from, from Christianity, the two churches demonstrate an ability to reflect by questioning the condition of possibility of their presence and of their flourishing in an environment which at first, at first glance seems unsupportive of them. In this presentation, I have shown that the implementation of accessibility theory results in the creation of a continuum between Quebec cultural and church subculture thereby breaking away from the idea that the identity of a church is based on a gap between it and the rest of the society. Thank you.